Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, then hi, my name is Becca. I am talking about my March favorites today from makeup to skincare to some random things, travel stuff. It's been a very busy month for me, but I've still tried a ton of beauty stuff, a ton of stuff in general. So I've got a lot to share with you. Let's get right into it. I'm gonna start with makeup. I had a couple of new trying new makeup videos go up this last month, and in one of them I tried out a few different things from Jones Road Beauty, and there are two things in particular that I've been using nonstop since filming that video. The first one I've mentioned a bunch already, it's the Jones Road Face Pencil in the shade number nine. So this is basically like a stick concealer. You can use it to conceal under your eyes, around your face. I actually like it best around the face. Um, it's just a really nice like spot concealer or you can add coverage in larger areas but it's not a huge stick like it's not an actual foundation stick size so you would probably run through it pretty quickly that way it's very creamy it's easy to melt into the skin with the fingers it's super skin like it's neither too dewy nor matte it just has a really natural finish it's just it's an easy pinpoint concealer. So I've been reaching for that a ton. The other thing is the Jones Road Beauty Bronzer and they release their bronzing brush at the same time. I have the shade Tan. It's a pretty classic powder bronzer, but it is really smooth. I find that it's not powdery at all. It's kind of a hard pressed bronzer. So you cannot over apply this. It's very, easy to build up, but it doesn't start out too, too pigmented. And this brush really helps too. It's super soft, it's very big. You can see it's sort of pinched on the side and it gives you a very sheer diffused application. A spring makeup trend I've really been into is pastel on the eyes. So I've been really into sweeping just like a shade, a light shade of purple or lavender or light blue or light green, just kind of a, a wash, almost like a watercolor wash across the eyes. And one of the products I've been using to do this a lot is the Flavado and Albedo uh, Lavender Bright Stripe Eyeliner. I also demoed this in a trying new makeup video. It's just a really nice white based lavender. So you get this really pretty, very pastel color. It's also a traditional wooden pencil. So it's on the drier side, but I actually think that's better because I can build this up and I can almost use it as a cream eyeshadow or like an eyeshadow pencil. And and it lasts all day long. It doesn't break up, it doesn't smudge, it works even better if I set it with a purple eyeshadow. It just works really well for that kind of like all over color. Then there's a product that actually really surprised me and it's the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Blush Wands. I have one shade, it's the shade Peach Pop. I tried it this month and I can't believe how much I like it. I actually might even like it better than the original glowy blushes just because sometimes I have found those to be a bit metallic on the cheeks and these don't have any pearl running through them. They're matte, but they blend out so nicely. They do set down and they last all day long. And when you apply them, they just create a gorgeous punchy stain on the cheek. So it's not like a cream bronzer where you get that um, creamy dewiness on the skin. These are liquid and they set down and they really, really do last all day long. And I also think this shade is really fun. Peach Pop is very warm. It's going to be beautiful going into these warmer months and I've been using it a bunch. Another concealer I've been using a ton is the Huda Beauty Concealer. This is the Faux Filter Concealer and I use the shade 3.5 Sugar Biscuit. This concealer is seriously high coverage. You get a really chubby doe foot applicator with it. And the thing I like about this is that it doesn't take a lot to cover a lot of surface area. So I actually oftentimes prefer a higher coverage liquid concealer, even though I prefer lighter coverage with my foundations because I don't need a lot of product for it to go a long way. That's totally true with this. I just take a couple of dots around my eyes and it spreads across the whole area. I've also been using this all over the face. It is a slightly more matte consistency, like a natural matte finish. But because of that, it really grips onto the skin wherever you put it. I've also noticed it has an incredible blurring capacity. So if you use it on the under eye and sort of drag it down around like your T-zone or like this pore area on the sides of the nose, it just like diffuses and blurs over the area. And it does that with under eyes too. It really smooths out the under eye area. So I've been a huge fan. I haven't tried any of the Huda like base products. This is the first one I've tried, but I'm super impressed. Moving on to mascara. I'm actually not wearing any mascara today. 
today, but I do have a couple of favorites, one old and one new. So the first one is the YSL Lash Clash. This really surprised me because this is a volumizing mascara with a chubby wand. And I also tried this in a trying new makeup video. It's not waterproof, but it's not super smudgy. Um, I have had it smudge on one very like oily day, but as long as I'm powdered around the eyes, it doesn't smudge for me. This wand is big. <laughs> you can see she's got bristles, it tapers, it's a volumizing formula, but the bristles have just enough space between them to work the product through my lashes, especially my fine straight lashes. And it's a very buildable formula. It starts out pretty dry, but because of that, you're able to build and build and build and it holds a curl without falling down. So I'm really impressed by this. I know they just came out with this in a really beautiful brown shade and it's nice to see brown mascaras on the market. Brown mascaras always remind me of being a teenager because I used to, when I was not allowed to wear makeup, I would sneak brown mascara because it looks more natural. So I have some funny memories associated with that, but I do like that that kind of natural softer look is coming back. The other mascara favorite is Not New, and it is the Surat Noir Lash Tint. And if you've been following me for a while, you'll know I love this product and I think it's one of the weirdest <laughs> mascaras on the market, but it works. So look at this um, applicator. It's like a wand with these notches through it, almost like a screw. And you would look at it and think, I have no idea how this is go going to apply product through my lashes, but it does. Somehow it's very, very black. It's not going to be super volumizing, but it's lengthening and it holds a curl so, so well. So it gives you this really fanned out lash look. It's one of my all time favorite mascaras, never smudges. And especially if you have smaller eyes or hooded eyes or you just don't like a really big mascara brush you really really should try this because it's so different from anything else on the market and it really works Speaking of Surat, I am working on a brand review of the brand just because I think it's such a gorgeous brand. Not a lot of people know about it, but I've had the opportunity to try a few new things from the brand that I haven't showed you yet, but I will show you in more detail. But what I want to mention are their artistique blushes. So these are single blushes. Well, they're called blushes, but they have these like bronzer shades, highlighter shades. So I have one shade here called Coup de Genie. Genie? <laughs> Um, that's a highlighter shade. I have another shade that I've been wearing a ton called Chaleur, and it's just a really beautiful, like, nude, beigey blush. It's the kind of thing that doesn't, I just totally scratched it. I always do this. It's the kind of thing that doesn't look like much in the pan, but on the skin, it's gorgeous. It's luminous. It's not metallic but it just has a gorgeous satin sheen. And the other shade that's been really fun is called Brilliant Idee, Idee. So it's this really punchy coral shade. These are all a very subtle formula. So you're not gonna get like intense pigmentation and payoff. This is more about everyday sophistication and glam, but it also looks beautiful. Like it's just for a beautiful look. It's not going to give you like super impact. It's more about creating an overall soft, beautiful makeup look. The other thing that I've brought out is the Surat Cheek Brush and it's a very expensive brush. It's Japanese made, it's a Fude brush. It's one of, if not the softest brushes that I own. Paired with the Surat blushes, I have to say it's just a gorgeous, combination. There's something about this that just sweeps product across the cheek so beautifully. Let me just add some of this Chaleur shade. I'm not wearing it on my cheeks right now, but I just want to show you how like it's just this whisper of pigment across the cheeks and it's so beautiful and this cheek brush allows you to really buff in product and it's just stunning. I could just like sit here all day and do this because it just feels like the softest kiss across the skin. By the way, Surat did share a 15% off discount code with me, so I will link it below. It's Becca15 on their website. So just keep an eye out for that brand review. I'm working on reviewing everything, so you'll see it in the next couple of weeks. As we're getting into warmer months, I can definitely feel my skin getting a little bit oilier, a little bit shinier throughout the day. And so this came out just in time. This is the Milk Makeup Pore Clip Setting Spray. I just did a full review on Milk Makeup. I'll link that below. And I did give a full review of this, but this really holds your makeup in 
in place all day long. And if you have oily skin, this is probably one of the best mattifying setting sprays I've ever tried. Dry skins, you'll probably want to go for their Hydro Grip setting spray or something a bit more moisturizing because this is mattifying. It's going to lock you in all day long. What I like to do is I actually like to just do one long mist down the T-zone and then I'll spray the other areas of my face with a different setting spray because this actually blurs the skin somehow and keeps that blurred mattified diffuse look all day long like 12 plus hours so it's very impressive if you need something for long wear or special events or you're going to be outside or something i totally recommend this and then lastly i have a few new and old pieces from m cosmetics i'm also working on a brand review of m cosmetics so stay tuned but i had this cushion come back into my life it's probably one of my top two foundation cushions I've ever tried. It's so good. It's just like a beautiful medium finish. It's such a thin formula. Looks super skin-like. It sets down. I am wearing it today. I forgot to say. And it it's just so easy to use. I don't wear additional concealer with it. I just do like a thin layer of it. It's SPF 50, four pluses. This comes in six shades from light to deep. It is on the deeper end of the spectrum for cushion foundations. I wish there were more shades. As you guys probably know, cushion foundations generally tend to really market towards like the East Asian market. They're very, very light shades. I even struggle to find my shade sometimes. So I know M Cosmetics has developed some deeper shades with the Western market in mind, but I would love to see a shade extension of this personally. For me, I wear the shade Sweet Secret. It's a really good match for me, and I'm just so happy to have it back in my life. So as powder cheek products like bronzers and blushes have been hitting the market again in this like new wave of products, I've been revisiting some old cheek, like powder cheek products. This is not a new formula, but it's a new shade to me. It's the Heaven's Glow Blush in Baroque. And this is, it, it's so interesting. It's a baked blush. It doesn't look like much. It almost looks like a highlighter on in the pan. But this is a powder that becomes deeper on the cheeks as you apply it, and it just looks different. It looks different on the cheek. It adds some luminosity, but it still has that nudie shade. Another similar shade to this is Rococo. These came out last year, but I just got my hands on them recently and if you have a deeper skin tone I think this will do a similar thing for you of creating that like nude luminous blush but they just look so smooth on the cheeks and they're absolutely stunning and I've been really into their lip cushions again I actually have a couple of new shades the one I'm wearing actually is not new it's magic hour I'll just reapply it now it's like a beautiful uh, orange but like a very wearable orange lip and these are sheer, balmy, cushiony. You click them up. The two new shades I have, they're not new on the market, just new to me, are Venetian Rose. This one I've been wearing probably the most throughout this month. It's just a really easy, everyday shade to wear. And this shade, which is so interesting, it's a really cool toned lip for me, but I've been into it a lot. It's called Mona Lisa. And it just creates a really gorgeous, like edgy, kind of grungy 90s cool toned lip look. I do have an M Cosmetics discount code. It's Becca20 for 20% off. So I will link that below. So that's it for makeup. Let's move on to hair because I have a couple of new hair things that are really changing the game for me. All right, this combination right here is magic. So this is the Fable and Main Holy Roots Hair Oil. This is a scalp oil that you apply to your roots before you shower, like five, 10 minutes before you shower and you let it sink into the scalp. This is the Tangle Teaser Scalp Brush and you can see right here, it has these um, sort of long bristles with a lot of space in between and I love using these together. So if you are someone that has a lot of product buildup or you have a sensitive scalp or you just feel like you need a deeper clean on the scalp, you know what I mean when you have like dry shampoo or just residue in the scalp, I apply this oil, I like work through my scalp in sections and then I take this brush and I like really work it into the scalp. I'm gonna do this tonight actually. I work it into the scalp, I massage my scalp this gives you the nicest scalp massage. I'm like getting goosebumps just feeling it. And it really works the product through your hair. I have thick hair, I have a lot of hair, so sometimes it can
can be hard for me just using my fingers to get um, a really good scalp massage working through all of my hair. And this kind of does the work for me. Also, if you have long nails, you know that hot water will soften your nails and it often causes them to break. Sometimes I break a nail in the shower or after a shower because the nail is softened by the water. So having a tool like this to really work in the product, it just feels so nice. I'll sit there in the shower forever doing this. This also works really nicely to create a lather with shampoo or to work or like brush conditioner through the ends of the hair. It's just been like, I don't know how I've lived without it before this because it's become a total essential for me. I've also noticed with the scalp oil Oil that my scalp just feels healthier. I don't feel any itchiness or dryness or irritation that can sometimes happen, especially with like product buildup on the scalp over time. I just feel like I'm getting a really thorough cleanse. And the other hair product is not like a new discovery. It's been viral on TikTok forever. It's the Tiggy Bedhead Wax Stick. And I tried this a couple of months ago and as the warm weather is heating up and I'm wearing my hair up more, you can see like how long my hair is. I have so much hair, it's heavy and it weighs like my ponytail down and I have so many flyaways, but I wanna wear it up. And so this has given me so much control. It's just like a twist off wax stick that you literally use like a glue stick to tame any flyaways. I have very stubborn flyaways, let me tell you, and this thing like actually glues them down. Very few products do that for me. Even like my ponytail here, I'll just like tame it down with the wax stick and it sticks, you see? This is a seriously strong hold. I will say it stays kind of like sticky on the hair. So it is a product you'll wanna wash out at night. Like I would not wanna sleep after taking my hair down tonight and just like leaving this in my hair. It's a last day hair product. But if you really need like a slicked back pony or a slicked back, bu slicked back bun, this is the product, this is it. So this, and then using this duo to wash it out, it's just like everything I need. I got the hold and then I've got the products to remove the product. The products to remove the products to remove the product. I just realized how dumb that sounds, but here we are. All right, moving into skincare, I have a few new products I've been testing that I really, really like. So you guys know I talked about my Bio Effect EGF eye serum. I love that thing, but I emptied it earlier this month, and it is very expensive. I need to repurchase it, but in the meantime. I decided to try out the Medicate Intelligent Retinol Eye TR. So this is a retinol eye serum. It's a really interesting product. I haven't really tried anything else like this because it's a liquid. I think you can see like in the bottle, it's very liquid and then the applicator is like this little spatula. And so it's a retinol eye serum. You use the applicator to sort of sweep around the eye area. I'm 32, I want to take, you know, well aging or whatever whatever you want to call it, aging. Seriously, I want to take care of my skin and you know, just those fine lines and wrinkles around the eyes. So it's been nice to have a dedicated retinol eye product. This is not going to moisturize. This is more of a treatment product. So I've been using it at night and then I top it with like a rich eye cream. Um, of course you could just buy a retinol eye cream, but I really, really like Medicaid's retinoid products in general. I love their crystal retinol. And so I wanted to try a dedicated eye retinol from them. Really enjoying it so far. Retinol is one of those products that is more preventative. So I'm not gonna see overnight results or I'm not gonna see like fine lines disappear. I don't expect that at all. It's more about taking care of my skin as I'm aging over time. Speaking of well aging or just aging, I have been trying this new brand. It's called One Skin and they have this moisturizer. It's called their essential moisturizer. They call it their topical supplement. This moisturizer is like very high tech and fancy. I love that it's refillable. How cool is this? It is on the pricey side. It's a luxury skincare ingredient for sure, but they do have some interesting peptides in their own prop proprietary peptide in this. This is a great option for you because it's gentle on the skin. It won't trigger irritation and it's rich, but it's not too rich. It's such an 
interesting texture because it looks like this and you rub it in. It's not a very emollient cream. It has a really nice spreadability to it. And for me, this is plenty. And then it kind of sets down to this really nice like satin finish. Do you see what I mean? Like you don't really see shine across the skin, but it feels like it's creating this like veil across the skin. It's really nice. It wears beautifully under makeup, beautifully in the evening. If you have really dry skin, you might want to incorporate an oil, but I've really been liking this and I think it's a nice option. Again, anything with peptides is a nice option if you can't tolerate retinol. And I like that this is um, also refillable. All right, I've got something fantastic that I love that will work for all skin types and I've been using it a ton. So if you haven't heard of the, the brand Common Air, they do these really beautiful like no waste, no plastic packages. So they make products in capsule form. This is like a recycled and recyclable paper container and they do skincare in these little capsules and they're all biodegradable. So you don't have any plastic, there's no pump, and they're all like individual servings of skincare. So they've done this with vitamin C and retinol and their latest release is their ceramide capsule. What, what is this called? It's their 2% ceramide barrier boost. And I love this thing. So this is an anhydrous product, meaning there's no water in the formula. It's rich, it's got plant oils, and of course it has ceramides, which is great for calming the skin, soothing irritation, strengthening your skin barrier, and this also gives me a ton of glow. I don't wanna waste a capsule, but I'm going to, for science, to show you. So this is what each capsule looks like. Isn't it so cute? You just twist off the, the little cap, and let me show you the texture. It's almost like an oil, you see what I mean? It's this really beautiful like gel serum and it has a gorgeous emollience to it. It honestly feels like an oil, but a little bit more like syrupy. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. It's like a syrupy oil and it has gorgeous spreadability across the skin. I've had a few days this month where I've been a little irritated. I've been traveling. I've had some redness and this has really soothed and calmed my skin down and it's really healed my skin barrier. It's also amazing if you've over exfoliated and you just need that extra care. I've applied this both as my serum step, but I've also applied it as almost an oil step over my moisturizer. Like there was one night where I applied my skincare, did my moisturizer, but I was feeling like I needed something a little bit more. And I was like, let me just try this over my moisturizer, went to bed and I felt like it really did lock in and seal in all of the hydration that I used before it. And it also really nourished my skin. So I think there are a lot of different ways you can use this. And I love that it's a no plastic option. I would love to see more of that in beauty. And I think Common Air is really innovating in that way. And then a few like miscellaneous things to close this out. I actually just repurchased the NYK1 Lash Serum. So this is the package it comes in. This is the actual lash serum. I've used this many times before. I've gone through several tubes of this and I really love this because a lot of the traditional lash serums out there really irritate my eyes, especially the ones with prostaglandins. I forget if that's the actual word, but it's the active ingredient in like Latisse and a lot of the other conventional lash serums. That ingredient is what causes that really rapid growth, but it can also have adverse effects like changing your eye color or deepening the color of your like lash line, like the skin. And for me, it just causes a lot of irritation. This does not have that, and yet it's one of the few lash serums with which I see notable results. And my lashes are just like going through it right now. I've been taking a lot of days off of wearing mascara just so I can give them time to breathe. I actually really like a no mascara makeup look. I think it's nice. But um, yeah, just repurchased that and wanted to share that again in case you also can't tolerate some of those other harsher lash serums, this might be one to try. The other thing I wanna mention is something I've been traveling with a lot and I will be traveling with again this month. This is my like travel brush case. It's amazing, it's so thoughtfully designed. So let me just show you. When it's fully um, like zipped up like this, you can zip it and it flattens and it collapses right there. So it's almost like a pencil case. But then when you open it up, 
you are able to kind of like push this back and it has this like, I don't know, the structure inside of it that allows it to sit on a dressing table or the bathroom counter or your vanity or whatever. And it's just a really handy thing because it keeps brushes safe and it's compact and it flattens, but it also stands up when you need it. So I thought I would share that because I've been using it a ton. It's just one of those things I like forget about because I've been using it forever. And finally, we're gonna end on fragrance, and I specifically wanna talk about some of Fleur's latest releases. So they have just been exploding like with new scents, new categories. One of them is hand creams, and I think they do a hand cream in all of their scents, and I have a couple of them here. They're a really nice size, really beautiful, sleek packaging, of course. One that I've really been enjoying is Lost Cause. I actually don't have this in perfume form. I think it's really nice for a hand cream scent because it's fresh, it's clean, but it doesn't last too long. It's not too strong. I don't like overly scented hand creams. And this is a lightweight texture. It is hydrating and moisturizing, but it also sinks in quickly and it's not sticky. It's not gonna leave a residue behind. It's just a really nice, sleek, aesthetically beautiful hand cream. And if you like any of their scents, I think you'll find it in hand cream form. And I do think they're also carrying these at Sephora now. So if you're lining up your Sephora sale shopping cart, you're interested in that, it might be something new, something nice to check out. I also think these make really good gifts for like Mother's Day or I don't know, a friend or someone in your office. It's just kind of a nice like package in and of itself. And then I have the latest two Fleur fragrances. So one is called Tangerine Boy and the other is called Solar Power. Interestingly, these both have citrus notes in them, but they're very, very different. So Tangerine Boy is what I'm going to say is my replacement for Atelier Cologne's Clementine California. That perfume is tragically no longer sold in the US and it was a long time favorite of mine, but this has similar notes. So the top notes are lemon, ginger, and black pepper, Heart notes are apple, tangerine, jasmine petal, and the base notes are amber and moss. And I think it's the moss note that gives it a bit of a green edge. So it's not just like a juicy sweetness, though this is sweet and it's a little bit sweeter than Atelier Cologne Clementine California. That perfume had this like cedar note in it. And I think this has a similar like grassy green heart note that cuts through the sweetness and prevents it from being like a sweet perfume and it makes it a little bit more of an edgy citrus. Actually, I'm gonna put it on right now because I just, I love, I love this scent. It has that like sharpness of citrus, of tangerine specifically, that like makes my mouth water. It's a perfect perfume going into the warmer months. And then they came out with Solar Power. So Solar Power is a very sexy citrus. So the top notes are Italian red mandarin, sun-drenched bergamot, jasmine absolute, heart notes are neroli and orange flower, and the base notes are driftwood, solar musk, and sea salt. So this is citrusy, but it's much more of like a sexy, beachy, musky kind of scent. It's not your juicy citrus. It just has a bit of um, that brightness, that citrus lens, but it's much more of your like sexy skin-like musky scent. It almost has, um, because of the driftwood, this beachy quality to it, not in like a coconut sunscreen way, but it has this beachy muskiness to it. And I, I really think it's very sexy. It's a great um, unisex scent. I'm gonna make Sean wear this because I think it's a really gorgeous unisex scent, especially going into these warmer months. So if you like something brighter, juicier, sweeter, fresher, Tangerine Boy, if you like something muskier, sexier, warmer, then I would go for Solar Power. But these are both really, really nice spring and summer perfume releases. If you're curious, they will be in the Sephora sale. All right, that's it for me. I know that was a lot of stuff. Um, there is Sephora sale content coming, so I always do my skincare, makeup, and then hair, body, all of that recommendations. I do three separate videos, so you'll see those coming soon. I think that uh, savings event starts April 14th. 
um, and last for two weeks. So you'll see that coming soon, but I'm also working on non Sephora recommendations. Like I mentioned, the Surratt brand review, the M Cosmetics brand review, new makeup. And I'm also going to be traveling this month. I'm going to be in Korea. I'm going to Seoul for like 10 days or so. So I'm going to be working for part of it. And then for part of it, I'm just kind of doing a solo trip. So I think I'm going to take you along with me. We're definitely going to be shopping for lots of beauty stuff and fashion stuff. Um, so I'm excited to share that with you. I'm gonna try to vlog while I'm there. So let me know if there's anything you wanna see while I'm there, any product recommendations, restaurant recommendations, things you want me to pick up and review. Let me know, it's going to be a big month ahead. Now that the first quarter of this year is over, I definitely feel the tides turning and things are just picking up around here. So we're busy, but busy in a good way. I hope you also had a great month and are looking forward to a good month ahead. If you enjoyed this, I would love for you to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.